Why do we need to do all the different types of tactics in chess? Besides of pins and skewers and forks and all the way like different types of tactics like uh, interference, discovery attack and so on. So up here we can see that black is upper rook on b3. So rook is about to capture this pawn on b7 and white would not be able to get um, queen promoted to b8. So we are looking for the way to stop it. And it seems like it's impossible to stop. Yes, we could try to do knight to c6, but unfortunately it would still lose the rook to b7. We still have a way to stop this rook to b7. And if we actually know what means interference, it's like we need to interfere. So uh, we could use a knight and jump to b5. That would stop this rook from capturing the pawn on b7. And there is really no way right now to stop this pawn on b7 is unstoppable so even if the rook would take on b5 we're still gonna capture it he takes b5 and still gonna promote it in the next move there is no way to stop this now if black would try to use our bishop and move to c8 it's still unstoppable as long as we use the pawn and either capture the bishop and promote the queen or even promote the queen up here it's still quite winning for uh white and will be up a queen now the next example up here we can see that the white queen on c2 is defending that rook on f5 quite nicely but still if you know what means interference is again like we would be looking for the way to stop this queen from defending it right from protecting it uh there's one way uh we could try to use maybe our rook and move all the way to c8 um but unfortunately white queen still has two moves to escape so d3 or b1 so that would not work just at the moment now we can look for again different ways and maybe there is a way for us to stop this queen from defending this rook and there is we could use our knight and what i typically suggest we always want to look for checks and captures in my opinion like the most of the answers you don't need to complicate your game like most of the answers are right there you know if you just find a check or a capture it might be the best move right? typically it might be like 70 percent of the times like it might be check or the capture so here um we could see that there is knight to g4 but it doesn't really help our position because after king to g1 there is still like it's still queen is defending uh the uh rook on f5 now there is another way we could use the knight and jump to e4 it would be a really nice check it would check the king it would interfere it would stop the queen from defending that rook on f5 so i mean we're happy if white will decide to take on e4 because then after g takes e4 rook is now defended as well as we are about to get the knight f3 here so we are quite happy here now the king will decide to run away to g1 we're happy because we get the free uh, rook on f5 again that's why it's so important to know the importance of interference next example is quite nice because here um black king is uh on, all the way on h8 so i assume black castle king side while the white king um was not able to castle so it seems like it's on f1 didn't get a chance to castle now in this position here uh we can see that um our rook is looking okay, all the way to h4 and if there would be just no queen on e7 it would probably end the game quite soon but unfortunately the queen is up there so that's the first thing okay we found what we would like to capture the second thing okay we found what is defending so queen is defending the rook now how could we stop that queen from defending the rook on h4 there is a way promise so instead of just going there and capturing this rook and letting them recapture and then threaten like knight h2 fork up here maybe like knight f2 or bishop f2 there could be a, like a lot of different attacking patterns on the king side and king could really be in danger up here um we should really go back and think okay how could i stop this queen from defending the rook there is a way so we could use that pawn on f5 and just move to f6 now the couple of different variations we have to be aware of what if so the first one okay we stop the screen what if queen takes captures and checks so what if queen takes f6 now we're going to continue with queen takes f6 which would check the king and attack the rook at the same time so it's a forcing move so black has to respond and like has to capture it back on f6 right now so and while they capture on f6 we're going to use the rook and capture on h4 which means we are up in exchange so we just want a piece 
just thanks to our rook uh, of h4. Now we go back. What if knight takes x6? Uh, we'll be more than happy because now after rook takes h4, again, get another um, free uh, exchange rate. So the king has to run away. So you already like up a piece here. So the last think what if rook takes h1 if rook takes h1 we are the most happy because now our queen of course will recapture it back it puts this king in check and actually in a big trouble because thanks to our pawn on f6 which we do call a wedge pawn which is always helpful for all different checkmates the king is quite stuck so it can't run away to g7 because of the pawn uh, it can move up here because the queen is still controlling. There is like a couple of ways to block this, like knight h6 or knight h2, but none of this really is helpful because after queen takes h2, we're still meeting up here. Okay. And next example here. So in this position, we can see that uh, in this moment, black is already winning. We are like up a rook by that time and we are up a bishop but it still doesn't mean that we should like we should consider as we already won we should still try to do our best and should st still try to win more pieces if it's possible so at that point we see that the queen on f6 is attacking two pieces knight on g5 and um, this knight on c3 what's so special about this well uh we are attacking one on c3 one on g5 both of those knights are defended only by one piece, which is the bishop on d2, which we call an overworked piece. Why it's overworked? Because it's defending more than one piece at the same time. It means that it's more vulnerable than, let's say, uh, that pawn on h2, which is defending only one on g3. Now, since we know that the bishop on d2 is a vulnerable piece, we are looking for a way to make this piece like you know less powerful now we are looking around this bishop and it seems that we luckily have this pawn up here on e4 that pawn will be our helper so what we're gonna do we're gonna try to attack that bishop on d2 by moving pawn to e3 and it seems like after that move white is quite lost because if bishop takes on e3 we're happily gonna take on c3 it's really a nice move because now we're checking the king. We're happy to trade queens because we are up so much material that like you would like to trade all the pieces and uh, transpose to the end game where we'll be like up a lot of pieces up here. Or if one takes e3, then we're just gonna use the queen and get another knight, which is again nice to have another knight. So here. So thanks to this, we are able to find a way to uh interfere the piece to stop the piece from defending like two pieces at the same time thanks to the knowledge that like, ability to find this um uh overworked piece on d2 mm -hmm. and the final example up here <clears throat> is um so we are trying to attack uh is and we are trying to always look for checks and captures as we said uh, as i said before king is on c2 but it's pretty limited so the king is on c2 but it's pretty limited so it has only one square to escape because all of the other squares are taken so the rook is controlling d file knight is controlling d e3 d3 it can move to d2 because the pawn and the rook has only one square to run away so again i would always consider especially when you're doing some puzzles or when you're playing a game always consider checks and captures this is very basic but it's extremely helpful knowledge which helped me and my students to succeed in many games so uh, i can see only one check in this position which is rook to d2 but as soon as i see that i can move rook to d2 that would check the king I'll have to run away to c1 but then after that, we're just going to get the free knight on e1. And that would help us like, to win the game because after that, we just gain a free piece here. So interferences are extremely helpful puzzles. Like sometimes it's just a quiet move, but it can be very helpful, way more helpful than the uh, basic tactics.